Hi, I'm Jonathan Tripodi. I'm the author of Freedom from Body Memory and the founder of the Body Memory Recall Approach. BMR is a form of transformational body work uh, in which uh, touch is applied to the body to help a person connect with those places in their body where they're still um, actively suppressing memories from their past that cause them either physical or emotional overwhelm or pain. Um, this becomes an opportunity to come out of that protective response, uh, feel and release those experiences so that you no longer have to suppress them. Now, how does this help a person who's in chronic pain? That's really the subject matter of this video. What is the nature of chronic pain? How is it that pain in our body persists over time for months or years? And so when you explore uh, that question, uh, you have to begin to appreciate the different sources of pain. Where do they come from? So what you begin to, to find out, and people who are in chronic pain actually become experts uh, at chronic pain because they have to be in order to understand more fully the, the uh, experience that they're going through that's causing them so much suffering. Um, one is uh, there's dietary sources. Okay. Um, there's physical sources. There's emotional sources. There's chemical sources. And certainly there's emotional psychological sources. And so in your attempt to resolve chronic pain, i.e. make it go away, you ultimately explore all of these sources. And in that exploration, you come to a greater understanding of those sources and implement changes in your, in your life that begin to address these sources. So you begin to alter your diet or explore different forms of diet that are anti-inflammatory, um, that are detoxifying, uh, that are nourishing. Uh, you begin to uh, practice uh, uh, physical techniques to keep muscles loose and uh, flexible rather than tense. Um, you begin to explore certain forms of exercise that help to move the energy in your body so it doesn't settle and become tension. Uh, you might even explore breath work that helps you to come out of these um, uh, fixed states of shallow breathing and restore the proper exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your body. So there's all these different methods Typically, though, the people that contact me with chronic pain conditions um, have spent years exploring many of the different sources of physical pain. The one source that they haven't explored fully or in not in too much depth or sometimes not at all is the emotional. And so that's part of what I want to address in this video. Are the emotional sources to physical tension that generates physical pain? Okay. And so uh, I would like to describe how that occurs. You know, this, this whole phenomenon of emotional suppression an emotional based physical tension. Um, when you have an emotion that's overwhelming, that intensifies to the degree that you experience it as overwhelming or threatening, you have protective responses that are automatically elicited to cope and survive that overwhelm. And uh, these, these three different protective responses are, are known as fight, flight, 
and freeze. They just so happen to all start with the letter F. So the three Fs. <sighs> uh, fight is the tendency or the, the, the part of the nervous system is, is activated. The sympathetic nervous system is activated to, a, to stimulate you to take action. Can you take action to change the overwhelming emotional experience? If not, you move to flight, from fight to flight. Can I move away from the experience that's emotionally overwhelming? If you can't fight or flight, you have a third response called freeze. And freeze momentarily takes the energy of the experience, takes that emotional energy and quarantines it. Your, your body's intelligence orchestrates the deregulation of that emotional pain by reducing the flow of that particular energy through your physical anatomy. So instead of it moving through you, it, it gets held inside. And part of uh, that protective response is not only to quarantine that emotional experience, but disconnect your psyche from it so that you're no longer even consciously aware of it. And that in effect becomes a survival approach to emotional overwhelm. Now, this is uh, a necessary, obviously it's this ability to freeze isn't there for no reason. There are valid human experiences that are so profound on the emotional level that in that moment, we're not capable of taking action. We, we are unable to, to change the experience by fight or flight. So uh, we, we have the freeze response as that default option that's always available. We can always freeze when the ability to fight or flight is not experienced as, 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 as we're not capable of that or are willing to do that. So freezing in the moment of an emotional overwhelm, um, becomes a, a, a very important and necessary ability. However, uh, the freeze response, if you stay in the freeze response beyond that moment, if you stay in it for days and weeks, months and years, you create a situation where the, the emotional experience remains quarantined in your body and you remain in a state of helplessness and fear around feeling it. And therefore the survival response of freeze stays active. And this continues to generate physical tensions in the body as a result. And let's say that tension is uh, from that emotional experience that you're suppressing is, is primarily active in your low back. So you end up having low back pain, low back tension that translates to low back pain. Uh, the vertebra get pulled out of alignment, discs get compressed, nerves get impinged, inflammation sets in and because the, the low back is always in a constant state of tension, the inflammation doesn't really resolve quickly or easily. In a state of tension, the, that environment uh, is the most difficult for the body to, to heal you know, within. Um, a relaxed state in which there's flow of oxygen and uh, hydration, water, nutrients, and the removal of toxins 
uh, the that exchange that circulatory flow is where we heal. In the freeze response, we're in a state of static tension. And if you appreciate that there's probably an accumulation of emotional experiences in our life that we have froze around and maybe unconsciously and maybe consciously too, uh, are not are aware of, you know, if there are things you're aware of consciously, and then there's so many of these experiences that you just forgot about because you disconnect your psyche, your awareness from those experiences. That's part of the part of the survival and part of the protection is to to disconnect awareness from it. And the frustration lies that, you know, when you get these symptoms, these physical symptoms of pain and then chronic pain and then chronic fatigue and then, um, you know, then your, your physical anatomy begins to have degenerative responses to this chronic tension. You know, discs start to herniate and, and um, nerves that were impinged become, you know, uh, the, you start getting numbness or tingling and, you know, the blood vessels that are being compressed are, are depriving your body of, of healthy circulation. So you're, you're getting malnourished and you're getting toxicity in your tissues because the toxins don't, aren't being removed by the, the circulation in your body of blood and lymph. Once you start having these degenerative effects, it becomes even more serious and, and you know, you consult physicians who are experts at the physical body. And then they begin to recommend physical or medical interventions, including, you know, physical therapy, counseling, um, or um, sometimes dietary changes and medication and surgery. Um, the challenge is that these recommendations come from a physical-based paradigm of the human body. The body memory phenomenon, the phenomenon of suppressed memory, is an energetic par uh, is understood through an energetic paradigm that includes the physical body, but also includes the nature of energy in the physical body that emotions are conveyed by energy. They consist of energy, not just chemicals, not just electrical impulses, but electrical impulses are energy, but, so, but other forms of energy, that our thoughts are energy, and that thoughts and emotions are in a communication with the physical body, there seems to be this marriage between the three that is inseparable, except in our heads. When we don't understand the connections, then they don't exist. But in reality, they exist. And so in resolving chronic pain, we're really talking about resolving the tensions that are contributing to the pain. And as we mentioned, there are multiple sources. So part of the path, part of the journey of healing chronic pain is coming to an understanding and bringing resolution to the sources of physical tension and physical pain, which includes chronic patterns of the freeze response to past experiences, unresolved conflict with the intense emotions of past experiences that are frozen in our body. And so one of the methods that helps you to enter that transformative state is touch. And when, when a person can touch the body in places where you're holding, where you're frozen around a past experience, it helps you to become conscious. It helps you to reconnect your awareness to that part of your body and to that protective response. And if you feel safe and supported 
and, in, and educated about this phenomenon, then it, it invites you to, to get conscious with the, uh, this, this freeze response and begin to let go of it. It's, it's, it's kind of a form of relaxation, but it goes beyond relaxation. It, it's a deeper state of relaxation. Most people relax, relax, relax until they hit that threshold where they, where if they relax anymore, they know that there's, they're going to be letting go of something that they've been controlling for so long. And they're, the fear of being out of control with an experience that you're overwhelmed by and afraid of uh, keeps you from going any further into relaxation. So we all have that like range of what I would call comfortable relaxation. And there's another level called transformative relaxation. It's, it's where you drop, you relax even more, and you begin to let go of control, not maintain it. When that happens, the intelligence of your body is, uh, is activated, specifically uh, the intelligence of your body that seeks to restore homeostasis. So uh, your body is super intelligent. And it's not only designed to help you enter survival states when it's needed, but it also is there to help you enter transformative states. And the two can't coincide at the same time. Survival always takes precedence over healing and transformation. Survive first, then transform. The challenge that people with chronic pain have is they're getting stuck in the survival response. They either don't know it or they don't know how to change it. And, there, and so it persists. And the pain of the past, the accumulation of the emotionally charged experiences that overwhelmed you remain stored energetically in the physical fluids and tissues of the body and in the energy field of the body and continue to create static tension. The freeze response, static, frozen. And that perpetuates the physical tension. So you get massaged, you get chiropractically aligned, um, you eat good food, you do all of these interventions that may manipulate the physical body, trying to get it to relax or to become more open and momentarily that happens and then the active freeze response to past experiences brings that tension right back so it's my intention with this video to help you to understand and appreciate um, this phenomenon of chronic pain and how it persists despite many different approaches to changing it. Um, you know, all of the approaches are needed and valid and supportive, but if they, they need to include some healing approach, one of the spokes on the wheel of your uh, approach to healing and transforming chronic pain needs to include getting conscious of the freeze response that's active in your body to past experiences and getting liberated of that response and moving into a transformative state in which what was suppressed is expressed. Once the energy is expressed, once the emotion is felt and released, there's a calm. The peace that you are looking for, the relaxation that you're looking for the relief is all stemming from, it, it's coinciding with holding and being frozen around a painful experience and then suddenly letting it go. Certainly that's a process. It's not an instantaneous event. And finding you know, a technique that you, re, you, you align with and a person that you feel you, you trust and feel safe with um, is, is the key. 
Uh, now, counseling is also very helpful. However, it approaches your transformational experience through the intellect, and it is possible to intellectually be at peace or in resolution with or a deep acceptance of things that have happened in your past. And having that intellectually, but not having it in your body. It's possible for that disparity to exist. So I have clients who will say, look, I've been, I've, I've got it up here. I'm good with what, what happened in my past. I get, I'm, I'm good with it here, but my body isn't good with it. And so uh, the need to talk about it, understand it, get conscious of it, that piece is complete. So what piece is missing? The piece of feeling it. Is it necessary to feel in order to heal? That's the question you can ask yourself. I would say what chronic pain is suggesting is if you've already approached healing from other methods and other approaches, dietary, physical interventions, psychological interventions, even spiritual interventions. You might meditate, you, you might have read some really positive spiritual material that has, has opened your mind and inspired you to access these realizations that are very positive, loving, and, and peaceful and wise. But for the ability for though that state of consciousness, that spiritual state of consciousness, it need, is if it's not embodied, then, then it exists up here, but not in here. And so I want to use this word embodiment because that becomes a very important part of transformation. Transformation is not complete until states of consciousness, wisdom, love, compassion, acceptance, enter both the heart and the body. It can't remain in the head. Therefore, uh, body work becomes very, very helpful. And breath work and techniques that begin to interact with your physical body, not just your mind. Techniques that help you to uh, get conscious of where in your body you're fighting and in conflict with the events in your past and begin to surrender that conflict and allow the discharge of energy that was born in the past but and quarantined in the past. It's never had an opportunity to be fully felt and released. So that's the tension. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, my website, jonathantropodi.com, uh, also can be found at bodymemory.com. Uh, has more information about this subject. And my book, Freedom from Body Memory, is uh, also very rich with this content. So if you want to learn more, you might check out both those sources. Certainly, uh, my services uh, in the form of uh, body memory recall body work, uh, life coaching, and retreats, body memory recall retreats, unwinding retreats, uh, provide experiential opportunities for you to undergo this particular aspect of the transformational process. So if I can help you in that way, let me know.